In the Kanto region, the year 2020 was rather calamitous. Pokemon are no longer capable of fainting. There is only living and dead. Pokemon centers can heal injured Pokemon, but there is no reviving in 2021. Use of items in battle is now strictly prohibited due to the great item shortage of 2020. Due to the growing risk of extinction, trainers are now only allowed to catch the first Pokemon they encounter in each new area. Also, nicknames are now mandatory so the Pokemon are easily distinguishable. As a final change to the world of Pokemon battling, the only remaining move permitted is Metronome. There was a vote, and as Metronome can become any move, it was the selected attack. This is what the Kanto region has become in 2021. When new trainers try to escape Pallet Town, Professor Samuel Oak rounds them up to coerce them into joining the endless cycle that is Pokemon battling. Everyone has to select a starter based on the last digit of their given ID number. 1 to 3 means Bulbasaur, 4 to 6 is Squirtle, and 7 to 9 gives you Charmander. We take our Fire Lizard as even Professor Oak's grandson is forced to begin his journey, and with that, our first ever battle begins. Ryu the Charmander's starting metronome becomes Poison Sting, and Gary's creatively named Squirtle begins his life with a Mega Drain. Some luck means Ryu survives his introductory battle, with Crush Claw handing him the win. As a way to pay off our unwanted debt to Professor Oak, we're forced to run errands for him, but once we're done with all that, we can finally get to work on escaping Kanto. Oak gives us five Pokeballs to hook us, and we head to Route 1 for our first ever encounter. We come across a Pidgey who, after an Icicle Spear, uses Belly Drum to make things really easy for us. We successfully make the catch and then head west to Viridian to Route 22, adding a Rattata after Ryu's hidden power. Then, travelling back through Viridian City, we make it to Route 2, where we run into a Caterpie who becomes our fourth Pokemon. Finally, after crossing into the forest, we encounter a Weedle, who brings our team to five before we've even had our first official battle. Meet Fricker, Nasher, Kuro, and Florp. As we visited every possible area, we go deeper into Viridian Forest, coming face to face with Bugcatcher Rick, who wants to battle. Beginning things with his Weedle, he gets to see us quickly making a change as we're trying to switch train Nasher. Ryu breaks out another Poison Sting, which is sadly his signature move, before Rick's Weedle counters with a... Hyper Beam. That is not good. I was sort of hoping Charmander would get us through this one. A sandstorm that Kuro conjures ends up knocking out Weedle, but there's still the small matter of Rick's Caterpie. Nasher also ends up falling to the sandstorm, so we're in real trouble here. Florp comes in for us and magically grows an arm to strike with a fire punch and then follows it up with an ancient power. Those two incredibly clutch attacks mean an icy wind is enough to get us over the line in our first official battle. We only lost two Pokemon, so I guess it could have been worse? After a small bit of grinding, we take on Bugcatcher Anthony and Fricker just runs roughshod through him. A bounce one-shots Caterpie number one and then after a pound badly weakens Oh my god. Explosion Caterpie? Really? So, two battles, three losses. At least Florp and Kuro are still going strong. Once we grind them up to their final stages, we head into Pewter City where it's time to face off against Brock. To be honest with you, I'm not entirely confident we're going to make it out of this gym. Brock sends out his Geodude to start the battle and we send out Kuro as a Butterfree for the first time. After a series of pointless attacks, Kuro pulls off a Whirlpool that sucks Geodude in and then after a nice rest attacks with another Whirlpool. I'm starting to question just how random Metronome can really be. It feels like each of my Pokemon have favourite moves and they just stick to those. We make a switch out to Florp the Beedrill when Brock calls on Onyx, and within a couple of turns a Muddy Water washes away the Rock Snake to hand us the win. More heroics from Florp. Why am I not surprised? Heading east of Pewter City, we make it to the Wild Grass on Route 3 where our first encounter is... Jigglypuff. When Metronome's the only move available, there's really no point in risking it, so we throw a Pokeball adding our second, third team member. Then, continuing onwards to Mount Moon, we come across a Geodude who also goes for a Belly Drum, which is really helpful for our wild encounters. After the catch, we head through the cave without a loss, and then head to the two move tutors on Route 4. They are only allowed to teach Metronome now. This is what they've been reduced to in 2021 Kanto. After grabbing a handy extra TM for Metronome, we hop down the ledge into Cerulean City and visit the Pokemon Center to heal. Hushed voices inside tell us that there's a man at the Cerulean Cape offering a way out of Kanto, so that's where we're headed next. After catching a Spearow on Route 4, we go north in search for the Mystery Man, but we're stopped by Gary Oak. Insisting we battle, Gary stands across from us and tells us that his grandfather is now funding his travels. Gary's mission is to eliminate as many Pokemon as possible across Kanto, taking down trainers so they'll have to return to buy new, overpriced Pokemon from the Professor. 
Wherever possible, Gary's grandfather will replace his lost Pokemon and keep him stacked on items so he doesn't have to return to the dingy Pokemon centers to heal. Our battle with Gary lasts nearly 15 minutes, which happens from time to time when Metronome is all you can do. Sadly, Roxy the Geodude, Bork the Spearow, and even Kuro the Butterfree all fall to the Oak Regime, but Flork the Beedrill gets us another win. Other than that, our only surviving Pokemon is Ruby the newly evolved Wigglytuff. Having sent Gary back to Pallet Town, we head across Nugget Bridge with a couple of new areas to explore. On Route 24, we find an Oddish who we catch, taking our team back to 3. Then on Route 25, we encounter an Abra who instantly knocks us back to 2 with Psychic. Thankfully, we do at least catch the Abra, so we're back to three for the fourth time. We finally make it to the Sea Cottage and meet the man that we'd heard whispers of in the Pokemon Center. After helping him out with his twisted experiments, he hands over a ticket for a ship, leaving Kanto from Vermilion the next day. Unfortunately, we'll have to take down Misty to even leave Cerulean City, so that's the next hurdle for us to leap. Before taking on that challenge, we grind up a bit, evolving Ribera the Abra into a Kadabra. That should help us out in the gym battle. We head into the gym challenging Misty and the battle begins with Ribera facing off against her Staryu. After some bad luck, we switch out to Ruby who's badly injured before eventually scoring the elimination with Payday. With Kadabra and Wigglytuff weakened from facing off against Staryu, Florp is essentially on his own against Starmie. Low on health and paralyzed, knowing a loss here probably means the end of our run, Florp breaks through and struggles past Starmie to get us the win. Ribera, Ruby and Florp have earned us the Cascade Badge, meaning we can finally leave Cerulean City in search of freedom. On the way out of the city, we make a stop in the Long Grass on Route 5, where we come across a Meowth. Ribera deals some ideal damage with Faint Attack, leading to the catch, so that's four. After grabbing an Old Rod in Vermilion, we fish on Route 6, finding a Magikarp who we add to our growing team. Then, with only one free spot in our party, we go east of the city to Diglett's Cave, where we meet a, well, Diglett. Arena Trap stops us from switching, so Paws the Meowth is blasted into non-existence by a Mock Punch from the Diglett, who's presumably hiding her hands underground. Luckily, we still managed to catch Diglett, taking our team back to 5 almost immediately. On Route 11, our encounter is Drowsy, and when we catch her, our party is full for the first time. So, with Blub the Magikarp, Zilch the Drowsy, and Sandy the Diglett joining Florp, Ruby, and Ribera, it's time to board the ship out of Kanto. Once we embark and struggle to make it through a door, the ship leaves for Johto. Unfortunately, Professor Oak has caught wind of the ship's destination and sent Gary to put a stop to it. We meet him leaving the captain's quarters, and after telling us that we're returning to Vermilion, he forces us into another battle. Every battle in 2021 takes at least 10 minutes. Metronome seems adamant to generate moves like Refresh, Recycle, Spit Up, and Swallow every other turn. When it's not doing that, it's throwing in a Fake Out mid-battle or attacking normal types with Shadow Claw. I swear it knows what it's up against and just settles on whatever will take the longest. Every single face-off is a battle of wills where you just hope your Pokemon hits with the one move that will work. Sometimes you happen to get lucky, sometimes you don't. Sandy the Diglett is decimated by a Kadabra Needle Arm, but more Florp-centric heroics carry us through. Gary Oak is headed back to Pallet Town, and as the SSN docks back in Vermilion, we've only got one option left. The Kanto Region Champion is allowed to leave to tour other regions. That's the last way out of Kanto, and it's the only chance we have. To make it there, we need eight gym badges and Lieutenant Surge is closest, so he's next in our sights. We need a Pokemon with Cut to make it to his gym though, but don't worry. Even though Florp has learned it, there is no Cut PP in Kanto anymore. That was not a circumcision joke. HMs can be taught, but they are illegal in battle. After several attempts, I finally get through Surge's gym puzzle in less than two minutes, so we've got some usable footage for this line. Let's see if our dream of becoming champion will end today. You haven't really had the chance to experience a metronome battle in full yet, so seeing as this was one of the quickest at a pretty rapid six and a half minutes, we'll keep this one whole. There was one major contributor to this being quick, but we'll get to that later. Just sit back and appreciate the conversions and the failed attacks for now. Ruby eventually strikes at Lucky and gets to use Smelling Salt, giving us the lead as Voltorb is put down. Pikachu is up second for Surge, and after some confusion, he gets himself and Kadabra locked into using Ice Ball. In a major stroke of luck, Ribera gets the knockout first, so we can switch out before losing him. Raichu's up last for Surge, and our obvious matchup is Florp the Beedrill. Unfortunately, Florp is bitten, beaten, and after missing Fissure, put to sleep. That's just the way Metronome comes out sometimes. We replace him with Ruby, because losing Florp is not an option. By some sort of miracle, Raichu misses a 95% accurate jump kick that would have unquestionably killed Wigglytuff, and then uses Memento to hand us a free win. That could have been a disaster, but instead we've come through with our whole team standing tall. Lieutenant Surge hands over the Thunder Badge and the TM for... 
metronome, and with that it's time to get some sleep. We wake up bright and early the next day with new areas to explore and new Pokemon to catch. On our travels we fill out our team with Emanort from the Ekans on Route 9, then for the first time we add a Pokemon to our box with Turbo the Voltorb on Route 10, finally inside the Dark Rock Tunnel we throw a Pokeball at… nothing I think, and maybe catch Air the Zubat? We'll find out whenever we open it I guess. Heading deeper into the Rock Tunnel we come across Pokemaniac Ashton who's keen to take us on. It's a fairly straightforward affair with Florp getting the job done as always, but that's not the focus. Blub the Magikarp reaches level 20, which means our little gormless fish is all grown up. Blub evolves into Gyarados, so our team is really coming together nicely now. Then, slightly further into the cave, in another trainer battle, Ryber is struck by a way too powerful Bulbasaur takedown, and that will be the end of his journey. Near the exit, we're forced to battle Leah, who's come for a picnic in a pitch black cave, and Blub the Gyarados decides it's a good idea to use Explosion. If her picnic wasn't already a disaster, it certainly is now. It really is one step forward and two steps back with this team. Always. After making it through the remainder of the cave unscathed, we head through Lavender Town to Route 8 where we've got another encounter. We come across a Growlithe there who we catch with the help of Turbo and then move on to Celadon City. Our first stop after healing up is to head to the roof of the Celadon Mansion to pick up our free Eevee. After that we go to the Celadon Department Store where we buy a Firestone and a Waterstone. That allows us to evolve our two newest team members starting with Fluff the Growlithe. Once we've got our new Arcanine, we use the Waterstone on Sharflegoo the Eevee, not sure what I was thinking there, and get ourselves a Vaporeon. With all of that done, our team is set, so it's time to visit the Celadon Gym and attempt to earn a Rainbow Badge. With Emanorsum's evolution complete, Zilch is the only member of our team now who isn't fully evolved. Erica's team isn't as big as ours, but her levels are pretty worrying. Let's just see how this goes. Erica leads off with her Victory Bell, and after several minutes we have Ruby out on our side. Paralyzed and weakened, Wigglytuff can't do anything to stop Victory Bell's Needle Arm and offers such great service to the team, she falls. That one hurts. As always, Florp comes to the rescue, scoring the elimination with Nightshade. Then against Tangela, Florp uses Perish Song, which doesn't matter much as we both have Pokemon to switch out to. After Beedrill attacks with Thrash though, Tangela's metronome becomes… Block. That locks Florp into battle. We cannot switch. We have to sit there, helpless, while Florp's Parish Count ticks down slowly, and after Erica switches out to Vileplume, it reaches zero. Florp faints, and that's just it. We have nothing left to give. Florp was the heart and soul of this team, and a randomly generated block has ended his life. Sharflegoo's Heat Wave and Emanortum's Meteor Mash earn us the Rainbow Badge, but at this point, what does that even matter? I guess now we have to escape Kanto for them. We replace Florp and Ruby with Air the Zubat and Turbo the Voltorb, so now number 2 the Pidgey who we caught on Route 7 is the only Pokemon left in our box. We actually make pretty quick work of the Rocket Hideout beneath the game corner, but Giovanni is sure to be a different story. By the time we reach the Rocket Leader, Air has evolved into Golbat, but other than that our team is unchanged. After switching out from Turbo to Sharflegoo, Onyx and Vaporeon have a 4 minute back and forth that eventually ends with a Steel Wing handing us the first win. Fluff the Arcanine versus Giovanni's Rhyhorn is the second face-off and again, we come out on top. Okay, really good start. Giovanni's last team member is Kangaskhan and we start again fresh with Zilch the Drowsy. After she's badly injured, we switch out to Emanortum who's blasted by a crit slam that one-shots her. Not ideal. We call on Fluff next, hoping to end this quickly, but Doom Desire destroys him too. This is starting to get bad. Zilch the Drowsy adds to our woes by taking herself down with confusion damage, after which a Kangaskhan Crabhammer obliterates Turbo. Yeah, this is really not going well. When Kangaskhan crafts a Weather Ball and sends it crashing into Sharflegoo, we lose our ace, taking us into a 1v1. Air the Zubat is 7 levels below Giovanni's Kangaskhan, but he's all that's preventing us from returning to Pallet head in hands. After Air summons Hail, Kangaskhan puts up a substitute, but that can't protect her. The hail damage takes her down to hand us a disastrous win. Giovanni's Kangaskhan has run through our team, leaving only Air the Golbat. The only backup we have in the box, as I mentioned, is a Pidgey, so that's our team for now. We head back east through Saffron City to Lavender, and after some grinding, number 2 evolves into a Pidgeotto. After that, we visit the Pokemon Tower, where we've got another new encounter waiting for us. Unfortunately, Gary's one step ahead, and hearing of our struggles has come back for a battle he thinks he can win. For someone who talks such a big game, Gary really isn't up to much here. Even though we've only got a weak duo, number 2 and Air have too much for Gary's team of 5. 
We do happen to get pretty lucky with our metronomes at exactly the right time, finishing the battle with a rest while War Turtle uses Memento. If every battle could finish with our opponent using Memento, that would make things a lot easier. While Gary heads for home to have his team replaced, we continue up the Pokemon Tower getting a Ghastly for our encounter. After a few attempts, we succeed in catching her with a Great Ball. That takes our team back to three. Maybe we're not done just yet. Having climbed the tower, we reach a ghost blocking our path, and using the Silph Scope, we unveil a Marowak who's yet another roaming spirit in 2021 Kanto. Of course, with our current luck, Marowak breaks out his Sheer Cold, which hits air for a one-hit kill. Good stuff. Number two, an Astro the Ghastly fight on, and eventually an Aeroblast calms the spirit of the departed Marowak. Down to just two now, we scrape past the grunts upstairs to rescue Mr. Fuji. He hands over a Poke Flute as thanks for saving him, and that means we can head to Route 12 for the encounter that may just save us. We play the flute to awaken the sleeping Snorlax, and this could be huge. Although it takes a while and number two almost drops, we catch Snorlax, so hey, our team's looking a little more complete. With that bulk backing up our team, we return to Saffron City and stop in at the Fighting Dojo. Once we've cleared out a few trainers, we're allowed to choose between adding Hitmonlee and Hitmonchan to our team. Eventually settling on Hitmonlee, we make our way to Sylphco with a party of four motivated, if slightly underleveled Pokemon. We defeat enough Rocket Grunts to reach Gary without losing anyone, so we're just going to have a run at him with Number 2 the Pidgeotto, Nero the Hitmonlee, Astro the Haunter, and Chunk the Snorlax. I don't particularly want to risk grinding, because even that can be a disaster. Explosion can pop up at any time. Instead, we're going to take on Gary, knowing we've beaten him with weak teams before. The level disparity in different stage doesn't bode particularly well here. After a Perish Song from Pidgeot, both Pokemon are switched out and we get a Snorlax vs Growlithe matchup. Chunk gets us the first win of the battle with a Razor Wind, so we can breathe easy for a second. That's about all though. When the battle rotates back around to Pidgeot and Pidgeotto, a Vice Grip from the fully evolved form leaves us short of Pokemon. Weakened from his battles with Growlithe and Pidgeot, Chunk comes back out and is immediately blasted by a Needle Arm. This is getting worse and worse by the minute, and for what it's worth, we're like 10 minutes into this battle at this point. When Haunter joins the battle, the already slow metronome off grinds to a halt. Something just doesn't quite work with metronome and ghost types. Both Pokemon just use ineffective moves whenever one is on the field. Eventually, Pidgeot decides to speed things up with... Sheer Cold. That seems about right. I don't think I've hit a single Oko move in this entire run. Anyway, with Gary spitting insults across the room, Nero joins the battle in a one-on-four. This probably isn't going to end well. Hitmonlee gets in some good early licks on Pidgeot, sending stones crashing down onto him, but it can only last so long. Ironically, a powerful rolling kick obliterates Nero, so we're done. Our journey is at its end. We can no longer become champion and escape the endless circle of nightmares that is Kanto. Professor Oak has won. There is nowhere to go. We can't get... Um... Where was I? Where am I? I'm... I'm back at home. Where was I before? What time is it? I need to get out of here. Right now. Huh? When did these go up? What is happening right now? I just need to get out of Pallet Town. I'll figure the rest out later.